It's Friday, November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving, AKA Black Friday. I'm here at the Desert Marksman Range. I'm actually down on the 500 yard line and I'm just setting up this steel target here. Um, if you can see that, set up my JC steel targets and I got a couple of paper targets at 100 and 300. Uh, just the 100 yard target, just to uh, do a quick chrono test again for based on my uh, dirty bore uh, cold bore shot and we'll see what the velocities are and in the 300 yard, li yard line I'm going to do some a little bit of load testing um, just between uh, some of my six millimeter lows just to see how it performs uh, the variances um, as far as uh, one tenth of a grain powder charge weight differences and then um, on the 500 we're just going to get zeroed in and then I'm going to probably set up a target at 600 later on surprisingly enough there's no one here well there's one guy here but he was already done shooting on the rifle range and he's on the pistol side now uh, but it's pretty much uh, empty here right now. So it's a good day. Black Friday, I think everyone's probably hungover from Thanksgiving last night or they're out shopping. So take advantage of this time on the range um, and get some work in. I spoke a little too soon it appears that more people have showed up to the range so uh, obviously it's a Friday holiday uh, it is to be expected which doesn't surprise me what did surprise me is the fact that no one's here when I got here except one guy so um, we'll see how crowded the firing line gets but I don't anticipate being on the benches for very long I'm gonna be doing most of, most of my work in prone but right now we're gonna set up a new a new series and I'm gonna verify the uh, Verify the clean, or sorry, the uh, cold, dirty bore shot with uh, 41 grains of H4350. Traditionally, or uh, historically, this this should shoot 30, 85 feet per second, roughly. But on a uh, cold, clean bore, it will roll like 3,000 feet per second. So we'll see what the chrono tells us. But this, round, this rifle has about 25 rounds, 30 rounds through it, and hasn't been cleaned. So the first round of the day out of a 30 bore is 3074 feet per second, which is on par with the velocity as I expect. So that makes sense. It's uh, definitely shouldn't be cleaned too heavily between range visits. Otherwise, my cold clean bore shot will will be a s lot slower than the, the other shots. So we'll see how the second shot goes. I'll let it sit for about 20 seconds and we'll shoot that second round. Second shot is 30, 90 feet per second, so it's on par with the averages for this load. We'll fire a third just for confirmation. Second shot is 30, 90 feet per second, so it's on par with the averages for this load. We'll fire a third just for confirmation.
So right now I got this quasi sunshade right here because it's hitting my uh, the sun's pretty much inside my field of view as far as the eyepiece is concerned. So uh, hopefully in the next next 30 minutes or so this should get a little better as the sun goes in the sky far higher. But right now it's a little irritating. So right now I got this quasi sunshade right here because it's hitting my uh, the sun's pretty much inside my field of view as far as the eyepiece is concerned. So uh, hopefully in the next next 30 minutes or so this should get a little better as the sun goes in the sky far higher. But right now it's a little irritating. Sun's still in the eye, but it's getting better, so I can actually shoot without the uh, hat in the way. We're still on 300. Should shoot about six more rounds, I think, on this firing line before I move to my 500 steel. Hey Henry, are the swingers uh are the swingers the clubs or somebody else? I think there's somebody One's a 500. else. Those are mine. Oh, those are yours. You want to shoot on it? Can I? Go ahead. I think the one on the left is a uh, six inch, maybe five inch. Sounds good. That's at 500 yards. Yes, like, should be. <laughs> hey, like it's so like I want to try other. Take five. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> Get back. Oh, 50%. Oh, yeah, uh, left of it. All right, so that was 1233. So it's pretty busy at the range. The line is full. It's the first time I've ever been at the uh, Desert Marksman Range when it's been packed like this. Uh, but I pretty much got all my rounds down range. Uh, actually, a couple, my, both of my steel targets fell off. 
Um, they got shot off, I guess, in the bolts sheared. So uh, the next ceasefire, I'm going to go roll out to the 500 and pick them up. Uh, earlier in the segment, I did shoot a few rounds without the muzzle brake on the, the mousing field. And it's interesting how the recoil is a lot different compared to with the brake on. It's significantly different. It has this weird feel to it. And the point of impact does shift quite a bit. Um, when we go out there or and retrieve the targets, we'll see, I'll show you what they look like at 300. But they definitely go down and to the right or to the left. So the, it could be the shooter, but it's also most likely uh, due to the gun as well. Came out to the 500 to grab my targets because um, I'm pretty much done. I got to do some photos, shoot a little bit of photography before I leave, but uh, cleaning up the targets, you can see here that the um, pretty much the uh, targets got shot off the the uh, hangers. It looks like the bolts sheared off. And right now I have the uh, this plate here. As you can see here, the bolt sheared. And then uh, I gotta find the uh, find the smaller target which came off and it's right there. So pretty much the bolt sheared off the targets. So uh, need to repair these. This is a 300 yard target I was shooting at earlier. This is a six inch shoot and see. These are, there's 12, 13 rounds on target here, but this is actually a misfire that I shot on the bottom shoot and see uh, with my 500 yard dope. And so it went way high. So ignore this shot. The 12 rounds that you see here in this group were tested with the 41.0 to 41.3 grains of H4350 load. That was kind of the note I'm looking at. And I'm just more concerned about the elevation variance. These two, I shot low, so I know that they, uh, they were pulls, that I pulled those. But the general elevation variance is about an inch and a half at 300 yards. These two, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but the, the, gen the general area is right around this, this, this here. Um, the wind was cutting in and out. It was barely three miles an hour. So whether or not that affected at 300, it's, it's a whole other scenario. But I like where this note is sitting. If you count the fact that it's a one and a half inch variance, 300 yards, that's, you know, uh, half M away roughly, I guess. No. Uh, so three inches is uh, one M away at 300 yards. So we're talking inch and a half. So yeah, it's about half M away roughly um, variance at 300. So I like that node, especially at this group here. Um, 40.3 grains, I think, shot here and here. I think this might have been 40.3 and the rest of it shot in this level here. <clears throat> so 41.0 41 and then 41.1 and up shot here. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, I like this node. So 41.0 to 41.3 is going to be a uh, it's going to be a decent node. It hovers at around 30, 85 feet per second up to 3115, give or take um, that entire range. So three tenths of a grain makes about 25 feet per second difference. So this bottom target here, this is another shoot and see I shot at 300. I was trying to test the point of impact shift with, um, with and without a break. So these first three rounds here, I shot with 41.3 grains and uh, the 105 burgers, and they shot really good. I mean, you know, with the break. When I took the break off, that's when it started, I pulled this shot here, and then the rest of it started pulling to the left and down. So I'm not, sh a lot of this can be equated to the shooter because the, the gun is now recoiling a lot different. It actually has quite a bit of recoil straight back and, and you have to really be aware of how you control it. So that be, could be causing a lot of error here with the, sh um, as far as me shouldering the gun and having it properly recoil back. So I need to do a little bit more testing with and without a break to see whether or not it's truly me or if it's the gun. But uh, with the break, obviously shooting the first three and the rest of it started floating out um kind of need to isolate that probably do a more mechanical test to make sure eliminate shooter error so it's just after 12 it's about 12 15 here at the desert marson range i'm already packed up and i was uh on my gears in the truck but i was going to try to shoot some product photography here um because i had i got commissioned to do uh, a, some a set of shots for a new product for a manufacturer just a small item but it's not working out too well came on the side and uh 
over here on the camping area to try to find some kind of shots that I can do for this my idea that I have in my head on how to shoot it, but it's not working out too well. So I'm probably gonna I'm just gonna pack it up and go get something to eat and think about it. Um, I'm probably gonna just shoot it at home in the garage or something. Um, I can stage some studio shots, or I might go to West End Gun Club um, t on Saturday tomorrow, or maybe even Sunday afternoon, and uh, use the tack base for this thing. It's more just product photography, it's not really action shots. So, I mean, I can do it in a controlled environment and it's gonna look just the same, but kind of just need to be on location sometimes. It gets me to think, because um, that's just the way I, I work. I usually come up with ideas on location um, as far as my photography is concerned. Um, just a little note, I was gonna actually vlog last weekend on Sunday, but I was gonna shoot at the West End Gun Club during their precision rifle match, but I got tired because on Saturday, the, the day before, I was actually at a photo shoot. For those that don't f know anything about me outside of shooting or don't visit my blog, several years back, I got into portrait photography and it ended up like segueing into glamour photography, which is like, you know, swimsuit, lingerie, that kind of stuff. And I did that for a several years and then I just kind of fell out of it because it wasn't very, um, you know, it wasn't lucrative as far as um, I have my real job, right? And I do information security. But doing that on the side is very difficult. You have to be committed. You have to have the time and a lot more resources and having a, you know, 60 hour week job. You know, I'm, I don't do 40 hours. I mean, we, I work, you know, in the evenings and I do other stuff for information security. So it's kind of hard to have this side gig, you know, trying to do the, the trying to make money off of glam photography and you know whatnot. So that's why I don't really do it anymore. And it's more for me. And so I, I spend money on, on shoots and whatnot, but I don't really make money off of it. I mean, there's ways you can make money. And I've like, I've had to file lawsuits against some companies in the past or threatened to file lawsuits because they, they stole my photos. And that's kind of the most lucrative way of making, or the easiest way to make money in glamour photography because, you know, to be, in all honesty, when it comes to the internet, people just steal photos. And so they steal a good photo, they'll take it and put it on their website. And when you're talking about photos, you know, of attractive women or whatnot, or attractive models, that tends to get stolen a lot and reused. And so, you know, at some time I was, you know, I was making claims against these companies who just take my stuff without asking for it or even paying me for it initially because I would have just leased it to them. I was making a little bit of money on the side, but then I just, it's, kind of a hassle having to deal with that lawyers and having a legal team for that so I just don't really do that part of it anymore and when I do shoot glamour or portrait photography it's just more more for my artistic you know artistic uh, exercise and trying to make sure that I don't forget my techniques as far as post-production and how to edit photos and whatnot so anyway long story short I was at a on Saturday I was uh, some friends of mine acquaintances that I know had a, um, they had a location shoot and so I went over there and was taking some photos there because I had, you know, it's been a while between my shoots. So I figured I'd go take the opportunity. They got a good location, a nice house. Let's shoot over there. So I did it on Saturday and I was just dead tired on Saturday night and I just emailed the guys who were running the match on Sunday and said, hey, I'm not gonna make it. So skip that. So that's why I didn't vlog last weekend. And uh, anyway, that's kind of just a little bit of a, a side story on my photography um, and why, you know, what I do it for aside from my own blog, doing it on the other, you know, other end of the spectrum, trying to make a little bit of money off of it because I can. And so anyway, that's what I was going to try to do today after the, after I shot was try to shoot some product photography, but didn't work out. So before I leave, I wanted to talk about one more thing. And that's if you follow my Instagram at OCAVJ, you probably saw the fix it sticks bracket that I showed off. I actually prototyped this deal early on for the company because they gave me some beta copies that were kind of in a testing phase. And I couldn't talk about it obviously because it was a prototype. So I've had one of these for a while, but anyway, this is the final production. This is actually, I bought these myself out of my own pocket, my own money. So I have a pair of these is basically the bracket holds the two fix it sticks. And if you don't know what fix it sticks are, check out my blog. I have a review on fix it sticks. It's basically a pocket multi-tool that holds uh, quarter inch bits. These are basically in a T-handle formation and these were originally made for bicyclists because they were um, pocketable tools, lightweight to carry, and they originally designed these to be fixed so you only had four generic bits and that was it. And they were fixed on there, you couldn't remove them. And eventually they came out with the replaceables. So these are replaceables, you can replace them out with uh, whatever bits you want. But there's always the issue with bit management 
um, for those of you that use quarter inch bit tools like drivers, you'll know that it's, it's a pain in the ass to try to carry around a bunch of bits because you end up losing them. And that was my biggest complaint. And right now I carry my fix it bits and torque limiters in a small Maxpedition pouch. But when I carry that around, I just unzip the whole thing and empty it out on whatever surface I have. And then I pick my bits out. And that is a pain. But when I saw this, they showed me what they were coming up with. This is really cool because it's basically this, it's a, it's a, I guess, rubber of some sort of rubber bracket that will hold the two fix it sticks for you with the bits attached. And on top of that, it holds 12 more bits, six on each, or sorry, yeah, 12. So six on each side. And so you can mix and match whatever your, your, your application is, whatever you use in your daily basis, what kind of, what kind of, um, I guess, bolts and screws you come across that you usually have to deal with, you can accommodate those in your bracket. And so you can carry this, put it in your pocket. It's a great idea. And right now it's the perfect time because during Christmas season, you can, these are very inexpensive. I can't remember off the top of my head what I pay for these. I think they're 35 bucks for the bracket, which comes with two fixed sticks in the 20 bits or sorry 20 sorry 12 plus 4 so 16 bits sorry so you got 12 bits plus the four that are attached to the fix it sticks on the bracket so 35 bucks is pretty cool it's a nice pocketable tool but anyway i said that i mentioned these on instagram and I, on instagram i said i was going to give one away so i have this brand new one still sealed in this plastic uh wrap shrink wrap or not shrink wrap but it's sealed and i'm going to give that away to somebody and you know, it's just sort of my way to promote um, a product that I like, and they're not paying me. Uh, they never, they didn't give, me, they didn't pay me or at all. And uh, I bought these out of my own pocket, and so I'm gonna give one away. So to give away this fix the six bracket, I figure what I'll do is all you gotta do is comment on this vlog, this vlog episode, and the YouTube comments. Go ahead and just tell me what how you would use this fix it sticks bracket or the set would how would you carry it around would you throw it in your pocket your, your purse if you're you know a female or if your purse if you're a guy you know you got your man purse whatever you got your backpack your edc or whatever tell just just give me a short commentary on the on my on this vlog episode how you would use this and i'm going to randomly pick somebody i can't just you know i'm not gonna just pick the best story i'm just gonna just give me a you know any sort of any sort of commentary on how you would use this and I will go ahead and randomly pick one. I'll write some sort of random generator. Um, I, I will try to make it fair as far as the randomness because you know I'm a computer science major, so I understand. I was a computer science major. I got my degree in computer science, so I know you know the difficulties in true randomization when it comes to computers. So we'll figure. Out, I'll figure out a way to randomly pick one of those comments. So I think I'll leave it open for I don't know. It's the 24th, so I figure I'll, I'll leave it open till. I guess the second Friday in December, that makes more sense. And uh, we'll play it by ear. But just try to get in your comments ASAP and then I'll, I'll randomly pick a person from there and then uh, I'll give it away. The, I guess I probably should say the rules, but let's go ahead and make, just to be safe, I'll let's say well, you'll have to be 18, 18 or older in the United States to receive this. And uh, again, Post a comment here in the vlog, on this vlog episode, this specific vlog episode, how you would use this bracket, whether you carry it around in your pocket or whatnot, and just how you would want to use this. Anyway, today is November 24th, Friday at the Desert Marston Range, the day after Thanksgiving. Hopefully you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, if not, I apologize, and I wish you, have, hopefully you can have a better holiday season. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever. Um, but... I'll see you in the next vlog, which will most likely happen before Christmas. Um, but anyway, hope you enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving Day weekend.